or decades, the moon was thought to be silent, frozen, still, electrically dead. But on 23rd August 2023, India's Chandrayaan-3 made a discovery that shocked the world. At Shiv Shakti Point, the moon sparked, literally. Charged particles, plasma spikes, electrical fields, dancing across a surface once believed inert. NASA stayed silent until now. What did they find? Why did they wait? And what does it mean for the future of human life beyond Earth? The moon speaks. The moon has always been portrayed as a lifeless rock. Since the 1960s, lunar missions, including Apollo 11 in 1969, described the surface as dry, airless, and silent. That changed on 23rd August 2023, when India's Chandrayaan-3 landed near the moon's south pole. What it found wasn't silence, it was static, electric static. Using data from the Vikram lander, ISRO detected something stunning, active plasma behavior right on the surface. At a location called Shiv Shakti Point, the lander's sensors picked up charged particles moving across the terrain, sparking unpredictable electrical potential spikes. It was the first time this kind of dynamic electrical activity had been recorded directly from the moon's surface. The moon, long thought geologically dead, appeared to be teeming with electromagnetic motion. Scientists noted that the environment, while electrically neutral overall, was behaving like a plasma system highly responsive to solar winds and internal surface charges. ISRO engineers were shocked to see fluctuating data from sensors calibrated for a much quieter environment. This was no minor technical footnote. The discovery sent ripples through the global scientific community. It suggested that the moon is far from dormant, perhaps even dangerously active for future missions. And as NASA stayed silent for weeks, speculation only grew louder. But what exactly did Vikram detect? To understand the scale of this breakthrough, we need to dive into the raw science behind the readings, plasma, particles, and electricity on a supposedly dead world. A quiet moon no more. The Vikram lander came equipped with a suite of instruments designed to study the lunar plasma environment. One of these, the radio anatomy of moon-bound hypersensitive ionosphere and atmosphere, RAM BHA payload, began capturing data immediately after touchdown on the 23rd of August, 2023. What it found defied decades of prior assumptions. Rather than silence, Vikram recorded a steady stream of charged ions and electrons flowing just above the lunar surface. These particles weren't drifting aimlessly. They were following distinct paths, reacting to localized magnetic fields and sunlight exposure. Spikes in voltage were captured at different lunar times, early morning, midday, and even during low light periods. At Shiv Shakti Point, especially between 9 a.m. and 1 p.m. IST, data showed electrical activity peaking, suggesting a direct interaction between the moon's dust and solar radiation. The plasma environment was surprisingly dense for such a thin exosphere. Engineers even registered temporary static buildups along the lander's legs hinting at how this environment might affect robotics and human equipment in future missions. Importantly, this data wasn't dismissed as noise or error. ISRO scientists cross-verified the findings with Chandrayaan-2's orbital data and solar wind conditions from NASA's ACE satellite, finding matching spikes. This confirmed the readings as real and groundbreaking, evidence that the moon is part of a much more dynamic electrical system than previously believed. So, how is this even possible? How can a cold, dusty, airless rock support such a lively electrical environment? The answer lies in the strange physics of lunar dust, radiation, and solar influence. How a dry moon becomes electrically active. For decades, the moon was seen as a passive body. No air, no weather, no currents. But its surface dust, called regolith, holds secrets. The particles are jagged, glassy, and capable of holding electrostatic charge. When solar wind, a stream of charged particles from the sun, hits the moon, it knocks electrons loose, charging the dust. This creates a thin but electrically active layer around the moon, known as the plasma sheath. Even though the moon lacks a global magnetic field, small regions show localized magnetic anomalies. These areas, some only 10 to 30 kilometers wide, guide the movement of plasma and dust, creating miniature storms of electrical activity visible to instruments like RAMBA. Sunlight also plays a role, 
During lunar day, ultraviolet radiation ionizes the surface. This not only excites the particles, but can make dust grains levitate, sometimes centimeters above the ground. The phenomenon was hinted at during Apollo 17 in 1972, when astronauts saw glowing dust on the horizon during sunrise, likely the result of electrostatic levitation. This complex interaction of sunlight, dust, and plasma creates a constantly shifting electrical system. And because the moon has no atmosphere to absorb or buffer this energy, even small inputs from the sun can lead to significant changes on the surface. Chandrayaan-3 has now shown us just how volatile and unpredictable this system can be. For over 50 years, textbooks taught that the moon was geologically dead and electrically quiet. But as the dust now quite literally stirs, it's time to revisit those long-held beliefs and see where science may have underestimated our closest neighbor, what scientists expected. For most of modern history, the moon was considered scientifically simple. Since the Apollo era, 1969 to 1972, researchers believed the moon was geologically dead, electrically inactive, and unchanged for billions of years. With no atmosphere, no global magnetic field, and no internal heat like Earth, the moon was treated as a frozen relic from the early solar system, 4.5 billion years ago. Earlier missions reinforced this belief. Orbiters from NASA, ESA, and ISRO detected only weak electromagnetic effects, usually blamed on solar wind interference. Instruments flown before 2010 lacked the sensitivity to measure fine-scale plasma changes near the surface. As a result, most models assumed the lunar surface carried only temporary static charge that quickly dissipated. Even during Apollo 15, 1971, and Apollo 17, 1972, astronauts reported strange glowing dust near the horizon. These observations were logged, but largely dismissed as optical effects or camera artifacts. Without direct surface-level plasma instruments, there was no way to confirm sustained electrical activity. The moon remained categorized as electrically neutral in textbooks for decades. Chandrayaan-3 shattered this assumption. Unlike orbiters flying 100 kilometers above the surface, Vikram sat directly on the regolith, measuring real-time electrical behavior. The difference in perspective revealed something past missions simply could not see. The dead moon model was incomplete and possibly wrong. With the old model collapsing, attention turned to the evidence itself. What exactly did Vikram measure, and how strong were these electrical signals that forced scientists to rethink lunar physics? The data behind the discovery. The breakthrough came from precise instruments aboard the Vikram lander, especially the Ramba LP payload designed to study plasma near the surface. Within hours of landing on 23rd August 2023, the sensors began recording electron density, ion flow, and electrical potential variations far above predicted levels. Measurements showed repeated voltage spikes, ranging from tens to hundreds of millivolts, occurring over intervals of seconds to minutes. These weren't isolated events. The data revealed consistent patterns tied to lunar local time, peaking during sunlight exposure between 8 a.m. and 2 p.m. IST. This suggested a direct connection to solar radiation rather than random noise. ISRO scientists cross-checked the readings with data from Chandrayaan-2, 2019, and space weather inputs from NASA's ACE and DSGOVR satellites. Solar wind conditions matched the timing of plasma fluctuations recorded on the moon. This eliminated the possibility of sensor malfunction or data corruption. By September 2023, internal reviews confirmed the signals were real and repeatable. The moon's surface was acting like a dynamic electrical interface, responding instantly to external energy. This wasn't just an anomaly, it was a new physical environment that had gone undetected until now. As the data became undeniable, global attention shifted. The question was no longer if the moon was electrically active, but why NASA, after weeks of silence, finally chose to respond? Why NASA finally broke its silence? For several weeks after the discovery, NASA made no public comment. This silence fueled speculation across the scientific community and media. Historically, NASA moves cautiously when new findings challenge long-standing models especially those involving human safety, Artemis missions, and future lunar bases planned for the late 2020s. 
Behind the scenes, NASA researchers began independent verification. Teams from Goddard Space Flight Center, JPL, and MIT compared Chandrayaan-3 data with legacy lunar plasma models developed between 2008 and 2020. The conclusion was clear. The electrical activity was real, measurable, and previously underestimated. By October 2023, NASA acknowledged the findings in scientific briefings, confirming that the Moon hosts a complex plasma environment near its surface. Officials emphasized collaboration with ISRO, noting that Chandrayaan-3 provided the first direct surface-level confirmation of theories long debated but never proven. NASA's response marked a turning point. The agency admitted that future missions, especially long-duration astronaut stays, must now account for electrostatic hazards, dust charging, and plasma interference. The moon was no longer just a landing site. It was an active environment demanding new rules. With NASA now on record, the discovery's implications grow even larger. If the moon is electrically alive, what does that mean for astronauts, lunar bases, and the future of human expansion beyond Earth? The physics of lunar electricity. At the core of this discovery is plasma, the fourth state of matter. Plasma is made of free electrons and ions, often created by extreme heat or radiation. On Earth, we see it in lightning and neon signs. But on the moon, where temperatures range from minus 173 degrees Celsius to plus 127 degrees Celsius, plasma behaves differently. The moon's surface is constantly bombarded by the solar wind, a stream of charged particles traveling at over 400 kilometers per second. When these particles hit the lunar regolith, they dislodge electrons, creating localized electrical fields. Without an atmosphere to buffer the energy, the surface becomes a charged, active interface. Even in the absence of a global magnetic field, small patches of lunar crust retain magnetism from billions of years ago. These anomalies, some detected by Lunar Prospector in 1998, interact with plasma and solar wind, altering how the electric charges spread. The result is a constantly changing surface environment, dynamic, electric, and far more complex than once imagined. The key takeaway? The moon isn't just passively reflecting sunlight. It's electrically interacting with space. This interaction affects how dust moves, how radiation flows, and possibly how instruments function. Chandrayaan-3's measurements have confirmed that even in the vacuum of space, the moon is part of an active electromagnetic system. If the moon's surface can generate electricity and shift dust with plasma bursts, the implications for human activity are enormous. The next challenge isn't just visiting the moon, it's surviving and building on it. Implications for future lunar missions. With plans for Artemis III aiming to land astronauts near the moon's south pole in 2026, NASA and its partners now face new engineering challenges. A charged surface means any long-term equipment or habitats will be exposed to electrostatic forces, possibly strong enough to damage electronics or corrode components. Robotic systems, like the upcoming Viper rover, scheduled for 2024, must be equipped with sensors to monitor and neutralize surface charge. This includes shielding against plasma-induced discharges and designing dust-tolerant joints. Chandrayaan-3's data helps inform these designs. India's discovery may now shape global lunar architecture. Astronaut safety is another concern. Electrostatic buildup on spacesuits or tools could lead to unexpected shocks, dust adhesion, or even malfunction of life support systems. Future training programs will need to include protocols for operating in high charge zones and dealing with lunar dust, which now appears more mobile and reactive than ever. There's also potential benefit. If managed well, this plasma activity could provide a source of low power energy harvesting for lunar stations. Small scale devices might extract energy directly from the ambient electric fields. In short, the moon's surface might not just be a threat, it could also become a resource. And as ESRO celebrates this breakthrough, all eyes turn to what comes next. India is already preparing a sequel mission, and its ambitions are as bold as its recent success. Chandrayaan-4 and what's next? India's next step is already in motion. Chandrayaan-4, currently in planning stages, is expected to launch by 2027. Its goal? perform the first ever sample return mission from the lunar south pole. 
ISRO plans to bring back regolith and plasma-exposed material to analyze on Earth. The mission will build on data from both Chandrayaan-2 and Chandrayaan-3. It may include upgrades like deeper drilling instruments, extended duration power systems, and possibly even a small rover dedicated to electrostatic mapping. If successful, India would become the fourth nation to achieve lunar sample return after the USA, USSR, and China. There's also strong potential for international collaboration. With NASA now publicly validating Chandrayaan-3's findings, the door is open for joint missions or shared research. ESA, JAXA, and private firms are also showing interest in plasma physics and dust behavior on the moon. Chandrayaan-4 could answer critical questions. How deeply does the charge penetrate the soil? How does regolith behave under long-term plasma exposure? Could buried ice near the South Pole react to these fields? The mission might unlock secrets that shape not only lunar science, but our understanding of other airless bodies like Mercury and asteroids. But beyond missions, numbers, and data lies something bigger, a shift in how we see the moon itself.